welcome back. All right, so first and foremost, we are giving out a huge shout out to uh, Shane Jackson. So Shane is actually out in New York. He's the one that actually manufactures those any dash plates. Those are those plates that go around the uh, speedometer clusters for the, uh, the wedges and the Evolve chassis. So our little entre entrepreneur out in New York is actually getting into the clothing line. And uh, so Shane reached out to me a couple months ago. I said, hey, if I send you some uh, swag, would you uh, throw it on your channel? Absolutely, I'd like to help everybody out. So Shane sent me a, a hoodie and a t-shirt and um, very good quality, great products. Uh, check out his, his website, it's wedgelife98.com. Uh, this is just a couple of samples of what he offers. He also offers a bunch of different designs that are really themed to, to the uh, color schemes in the 80s and 90s, really throwback. So go ahead, check them out and uh, order some swag. All right, so today is November 7th. We're actually getting ready for snowmobiling season. So it's the time of the year where everybody should be bringing their sleds out of the shed, garage, trailers, whatever they may be, and start doing the maintenance on them so everybody is ready to go before the snow gets here and uh, you're, you're basically you're ready to go, right? So nothing is more frustrating being that guy and uh, all your buddies are waiting for you to go and you're out there sitting around, dicking around with your machine trying to figure out what's wrong with it. So uh, we're working on the axis. So this is a 2015 800 and this sled has about 7,000 miles on it. And um, for the most part, it's always been pretty uh, bulletproof, uh, no real issues, but what has, developed over time well what happened with the sled uh, when i was going up in an incline on a hill approaching 75 80 miles an hour the sled would just cut off uh, not shut off but um it would suffer almost from like a fuel cut where it would just fall on its face and then it would not advance anything over 80 miles an hour and then but if i if i was on a lake or anything like that with glare ice, I could watch the uh, the RPMs go all the way up to 85, 8700 RPM. So I know it wasn't an issue with the exhaust valves or anything like that. So what I think is going on is I think either I have an issue with the fuel delivery system or I have an issue with the clutching. So because it, it seems like it's mainly suffering from a fuel cut issue. So what I think may be going on as far as the fuel issue is that I either have a clog sock in the tank or I have a split in the line coming from the sock going into the uh, into the fuel pump because it almost seems like it's getting to the point where it's sucking in the air and I'm losing fuel pressure in the rail and then as soon as I let off, uh, back off on the throttle it's fine but as soon as there's a demand for more fuel pressure in the rail it's like the fuel pump can't deliver it and basically falls on its face but only when I'm going up on an incline right so Again, so I think what's going on is I'm getting uh, fuel sent to the back of the tank and it's sucking up air somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go ahead and remove all the bodywork, pull the tank and pull the pump out of the tank. And I'll show you what you need to do to replace the, the uh, fuel sock. And it'll also be a good time to discuss what's going on with the whole stop ride and the thing from Polaris and what their main concern with the design of the fuel pump and the tank and what they're doing to mitigate the issue. So with that being said, why don't we go ahead and start pulling this thing apart, get the fuel pump out of the tank and then uh, take a look at it and replace the sock. All right, first thing first, we gotta remove the side panels, pretty easy to do. Just hold on by a couple quarter turns. There's one right there, there's one right there and then there's the bungee on the bottom. Go ahead and remove those three and the panel pops right out. All right, with the side panels removed, we gotta remove the hood. The hood is just held on by two Zeus fasteners. Just go ahead, those are quarter turn, pop those out. And then the last thing you gotta do is disconnect the hood harness. There's a little push to release here. All you do is you push it and it'll pull apart. All right, so the next thing we have to do is remove the upper cowl and it's just held on by some push pins. There's one right there, there's one right there. You also have to remove the uh, CDI. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. And then there's another one back there hopefully you can see it take those off then let the cdi just hang there it's fine a couple another push pins there's one right there a couple t40s one there one on the opposite side and then uh take the other one out and then just it'll just slide forward and out all right so at this point we've gone ahead and removed the uh the hood the two side panels and we also removed the upper part of the the cowling and then what 
what we have to do now is now that we can actually see the fuel pump which is right down there to get better access to it we're going to remove the uh the shroud that goes over the tank and that's just held in by a couple of push pins there's one right there there's one right there we're gonna go ahead and remove the nut that uh holds the uh, the shroud on and then we're gonna pull the um the pull start back we're gonna cut the rope and then, well, actually, we may not cut the rope. We may see if we can just swing this to the side. So why don't we go ahead and remove those push starts and uh, see where we end up at. All right, so we uh, swung the, uh, the tank shroud over and out of the way. We didn't have to uh, cut the rope. So what we have to do is disconnect the two fuel lines and uh, they're just held on by these two plastic retention clips. All you do is just slide them back off. And then once you slide them off, the uh, the fuel lines will just uh, pull right off the uh, the fittings off the pump. All right, clips have been removed. So all you need to do to get the uh, the fittings off, you're just gonna pull straight up and they come right out. Now that we have the fuel lines disconnected, what we need to do is we need to slide the tank back. And to do this, we do have to take a couple things off, not that big of a deal. The first thing we need to do is take off the seat. And the seat is just held on by two 10 millimeter bolts. There's one right there and then there's another one on the other side. And all you wanna do is just grab a rationing uh, wrench and you can pop those right off. So on this particular sled, the rack needs to be removed. And the way it comes off, it's pretty simple. There's just two Allen bolts, one here, one here. It's a uh, six millimeter. So, and then there's two 13 millimeter bolts on uh, either side, so go ahead Remove those fasteners and then the uh, the rack will come right off. All right, so once you have the rear rack removed to get the tank off, it's only held on by, th by three bolts. Um, there's a 10 millimeter right there. There's another one right there. Just go ahead and remove that. And if you want, go ahead and remove that clamp as well. And then what I've noticed, apparently I have to order this, um, there should be another clamp on this side, obviously it's missing, but if there was a clamp, you would take that one off. And then uh, once you go ahead and remove those, the tank just slides right back. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove the fuel pump. Well, what I've done is I've taken a paint pen and I've made a couple witness marks um, because what Polaris wants you to do is whenever you replace this, they want you to replace it back to a certain torque value. And there is a specific tool that Polaris wants you to do uh, to use to do that. Um, I'm not gonna buy that tool just for that one job. So all I've done is I've taken a paint pen and I've just made three index marks on the tank and the cap. So when I go to reassemble this thing, um, I can just torque it back, well, tighten it back and I know it'll be torqued back to the approximate value. So let's go ahead and remove that cap and then pull the, uh, the pump out. All right, so we have the fuel pump assembly out on the bench. And uh, so let's talk about what we're gonna do. Then we'll, and then we'll talk about the uh, the recall that's affecting you know ten years of production from Polaris. All right. So uh, this is the uh, the fuel sock, and you know there there's a line that comes out of the sock, and it goes to the high pressure side of the pump. Right. So this is the uh, the uh, the return. It comes back to the tank. Right. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that clamp. And we're basically we're gonna cut a couple zip ties. We're gonna take the old sock out. And we're gonna put the new one in. And uh, so that's all we're gonna do. And then we're gonna check. You know, we're gonna pay attention to the the routing of the uh, of everything. Just to make sure we don't have everything crossed or anything like that, because it does have to go back in a specific way, right? So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the kit I actually got from SPI. So when you buy the kit, obviously you get the new fuel sock and the and the, and the line attached to it. You also get a new gasket, which goes underneath the uh, seal when it goes up to the tank. So we're gonna place that and a couple zip ties. That's probably, they're probably fuel rated. So they'll attach back to the normal spot. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. So what's gonna happen is uh, once I get my uh, place in line at my dealer, the sled's gonna go back into them and then they're uh, gonna pull it apart. So what Polaris is concerned about is they're concerned about static electricity building up in the tank, causing a fire. And it's uh, on a 2015, it's gonna be coming from one of two places. It's gonna come from the metal contacts that are, uh, uh, that are attached to the float level. And so that's one entry that they're concerned about. 
So specifically what they're doing is they're replacing the, the, uh, the float arm, right, to uh, mitigate that. And the other thing they're doing is they are replacing the, the metal clamps with plastic clamps. And essentially that's it. And uh, so depending on what year, the, the, the fix-it kit is a little bit different. I think in 2013, they're actually replacing the entire fuel pump. So if you do a 13, uh, you're going to get a new fuel pump. And then on the Matrix, it's a little bit different. But essentially, that is the main concern. I'm kind of surprised that Polaris is doing this. But again, when it's a legal issue and the lawyers get involved, they want to they want to mitigate any type of risk. That's what everybody needs to deal with, unfortunately. So I'm actually kind of surprised because this particular design has been in production. Not with Polaris, but automakers and everything else. It's very common to see a setup like that inside a tank. Um, again, I think the risk is very, very low. But again, if there is a risk, Polaris wants to uh, take care of it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the old sock, put the new one in, and put this thing back in the tank. All right, so we have the new fuel sock assembly attached. And uh, we got the zip ties back in place. Make sure we're not binding on anything and then we're making sure that the uh, the float arm is going up and down and I actually just used a spring clamp instead of the uh, the one they, they sent the kit uh, I don't have the uh, the right tool to uh, tighten that up and then uh, I also got the new gasket in place so let's go ahead and put this back in the tank and uh, get this thing back together all right so we have the pump back in and we got it in the correct orientation the, uh, the again so that's the inlet that's return, the return goes on the right hand side. If you're on the sled, it's on the left, so make sure you got it in the right uh, orientation. And we're torqued back to where it was, and all I did is I just used a little strap wrench to send it home. All right, let's get this thing back installed. All right, so it's back together. Um, so like you saw in the video, uh, taking it apart, it really isn't that bad. You know, in comparison to what you need to do on the Pro Ride chassis, where you have to remove the um, everything on the uh, the right hand side or the clutch side, you know you have to take the the oil injection bottle off. You got to take that the uh, clutch guard off and everything else. Relatively speaking, uh, the the fuel pump on this one is actually pretty easy to do. Um, not that big of a deal. Um, no real special tools needed. It's more likely if you're watching this video. Chances are you probably have everything that you need to get this thing done. So it's one of those things as long as you take your time, don't force anything, uh, be methodical, and you should be fine. Um, honestly, you could probably do this job in an hour, hour and a half. So it's, again, it's pretty easy to, to do. So the next thing I'm going to tackle on the sled is the secondary. And specifically uh, what's going on with it is when the sled goes in reverse, for whatever reason, the clutch is the secondary clutch is actually opening up, and basically the the drive belt is dropping down, and then it won't uh, go in reverse. So I have a feeling more likely what's going on is I have a uh, broken spring in the secondary. You know, because last year I had a broken spring in the primary, I never opened up the secondary. I should have and. Uh, so that may also be contributing to my issues uh, as far as the uh, sled falling on its face. I may be having a, uh, a shifting issue with the secondary. So we're going to go ahead after that next and we'll take it apart and I'll show you what you need to do to service it. I don't think I've ever documented what you need to do on the secondary, but for the most part, it's pretty easy to do. So if there's any thoughts, questions, concerns, whatever it may be, go ahead and go ahead and leave a, a comment in the box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.